So conditions for, for aromatic system must be cyclic. That's the first condition. Second, must be conjugated. So if you have a compound that looks like this, uh, is this going to be um, is this going to be aromatic or non-aromatic? Um, the first condition is cyclic. Second condition, it must be conjugated. You do have two pi bonds, but it's not conjugated because pi bonds needs to be separated by one single bond. Uh, but so here you have two single bonds. And if you have two single bonds that is separating the two pi bonds, this is a sp3 hybrid carbon. Um, that's another way of saying it. You have uh, these two pi bonds that are not conjugated. So it's non-aromatic. So we have non-aromatic. Okay. So it must be conjugated. It must be cyclic, and it must be uh, it must follow the four n plus two rules equals to pi electrons, uh, pi electrons, and when you solve this, you, you should get the value for n. A an integer could be zero, one, two, three. Okay, zero, one, uh, two, three, and four, but you cannot have decimal. For this structure that you have here, 4n plus 2 equals 4n plus 2 equals 6, and 4n equals 4, n equals 1, so it is aromatic. For, uh, uh, for, this, uh, for this one, for this structure, a 4n plus 2, um, equals also six because you are counting the pair of unshared electrons. If you have one pair of unshared electrons, yes, you count, okay? Uh, yes, you do count. And uh, the if you have two pairs of unpaired electron, un, uh, unshared electrons, you count one of them. So 4n equals four and n equals one. So this is also aromatic. So condition one, cyclic, condition two, conjugated, condition three, four n plus two must be you know, solved and n value should be an integer. The first two is aromatic. For the third one, if we have a cyclic system and it's conjugated, it's cyclic and it's, it is conjugated, um, but the four n plus two uh, equals four and four n equals two and n equals 0.5, um, so condition one and two is met. Condition three, which is this four n plus two is not met. Um, since it's conjugated and it is cyclic system, this is known as anti-aromatic. So is anti-aromatic. So uh, we have aromatic, non-aromatic, okay? Aromatic, aromatic, non-aromatic. And this one is anti-aromatic. So you should be able to distinguish between them just going through the uh, going through the the, um, the rules like the four conditions okay This continuous overlap is the same thing as I was talking about. It must be conjugated. Okay. Um, it, the structure must be planar. So if you have if you have like eight carbon ring, and it says assume planar structure, then you don't have to worry about the the condition that is planar or is not. But if it doesn't say, then if one of the choices that this is not planar structure, so it cannot classify as aromatic, then you would just say it's not aromatic, it's non-aromatic. For anti-aromatic, the first conditions are met, but the 4n plus 2 is not, is not met. So if you have four pi electrons, okay, four pi electrons or eight pi electrons, eight electrons, these are anti-aromatic. Often. So 
if you are, so four ends in general, they are anti-aromatic and four N plus twos are aromatic. If you say it's four N, that means like four electron, eight electron and uh, 12 electrons. Like this is a anti-aromatic system, even though it looks like aromatic, but it's not aromatic. And why is not aromatic? Because it's a, if you solve for four N plus two equals uh, eight, then four N equals six and N equals 1.5. And because of decimal point that we have here, the, the decimal number, it's not um, aromatic. And, but since it's conjugated and it's cyclic, but it's not aromatic, it classifies actually for more unstable situation of anti-aromatic. You do have aromatic systems that they are, they could be bicyclic, like naphthalene, and uh, anthracene, these are like a uh, aromatic system, like naphthalene, uh, you have aromatic, but uh, these uh, non-aromatic, like large molecules, because they cannot be planar, they are not planar, uh, is, not going to be, is not going to be aromatic. So anything that with the 4N is anti-aromatic. So if you have like 12 or 16 uh, pi electrons is going to be, anti-aromatic. We talked about this electron um, in the, the, based on the energy level or molecular orbital energy levels already. Um, so if we have the, we cut the molecule in half vertically, so we draw this line, the green line, this green line is a uh, non-bonding line, non-bonding line, and anything below that is going to be bonding and anything higher than that is going to be anti-bonding. For a molecule to be stable, all pi electrons, they must reside in bonding molecular orbital, and there should be no single electron. Since there's, like in this case, since there's single electron, it's not going to be aromatic. It's actually anti uh aromatic or non-aromatic depends on if it's conjugate or is not conjugated. So in this case, the molecule, if I draw the molecule this way with only two pi bonds and there's no way that is conjugated. So we already know that from in this position, this is not a conjugated system. So if, if it's not conjugated, it's non-aromatic. But if you remove H plus, if you remove a H plus, so there is a H here, if you remove H plus, the pair of electrons would drop in and it would give the carbon negative charge with pair of unshared electrons. And now when you are counting the electrons, you are going to have six pi electrons. So the four N plus two anulin, you get you're not the four N. So this is the four N plus two because you have the pair of electrons that it dropped back after you remove the H plus. A compound that loses H plus is considered to be acid. So when you compare like a penta, cyclopentadiene to cyclopentane, cyclopentadiene is more acidic because it can lose hydrogen easier. So because it, if it loses hydrogen, it turns out to be more stable because it's going from non-aromatic to aromatic. So losing hydrogen is easy. Hydrogen uh, ion, H plus, it's very easy for this molecule. So it's considered to be um, acidic. And being acidic, pKa of, of 16 is considered being acidic. If you look at the cyclopentane, you get like a pKa value of 30. So that's much lower. The lower the value for pKa, more acidic the compound is. So you can actually remove a hydrogen by using a base and changing this to a aromatic molecule or aromatic compound. What happens if you remove hydroxide? from the cyclopentadiene diene all uh, because 
if you remove hydroxide, hydroxide is not going to drop the electron back in. Hydroxide is going to also take the electron with it. So you have like heterolytic cleavage here, but in this case, oxygen is taking the pair of electron. Carbon would be positive. Now, this system is conjugated because you have delocalized um, electrons. That means it's going to form a resonance and the, the pi bond can move up here, plus charge can move down and it can rotate. So it is conjugated, but since the number of electron is not six or number of electron is a four N, now we are expecting this to be less stable and is actually anti-aromatic. So if removing, okay, if removing hydroxide ion, which gives like base characteristic to the molecule, um, removing a hydroxide ion is going to make the molecule less stable is not going to happen. And the reason is not happening because it's going from non-aromatic to anti-aromatic. So which one is more stable? First of all is aromatic, then is non-aromatic, then is anti-aromatic. Anti-aromatic. So stability increases this way. Okay, is more stable if it's aromatic, uh, but comparing non-aromatic and anti-aromatic, non-aromatic is actually more stable than anti-aromatic. Anti-aromatic is the least stable. So um, this um, dienol cannot lose hydroxide ion and act like a act like a base because if it loses hydroxide ion, it becomes anti-aromatic. So it goes uh, less stable even though it gives conjugated system. So we see that because the system is conjugated, but the 4N plus 2 does not apply. So we have anti-aromatic. But if it loses hydrogen, uh, for the previous example, the pair of electron is delocalized. Um, so it's conjugated. The 4N plus 2 equals 6, N equals 1. So we have aromatic molecule or aromatic system. Okay, another example of octatetraen, okay, um, or heptatriene, okay. If you have a heptatriene, uh, what happens with the, if it loses hydrogen, if it loses H plus, uh, losing hydrogen is going to change to uh, four uh, pi bonds or eight electrons. So this is a uh, four N, plus two equals eight. And N is going to be 1.5. If you solve it, I already did a couple extra steps previously. N is 1.5. So it's not aromatic, but it's conjugated. And it's actually anti-aromatic. Anti-aromatic versus if the, the hepta triene is going to, uh, lose, you know, if it becomes positive, so if it acts as a, um, as a base and um, it, would, uh, it would lose hydroxide ion, and so it becomes positively charged, like in this case, it becomes positively charged. Uh, if you have the OH and it remove the OH, you get the positive charge. It's conjugated, it's aromatic, so this molecule can act as a good or better base, but it cannot act as acid because if it loses hydrogen, it's going to uh, become anti-aromatic. But if it loses hydroxide ion, it becomes aromatic as it is now. Can you tell me what it is now before anything? How would you classify this? Aromatic, anti-aromatic or non-aromatic? for this molecule. You could use chat or mic, please respond. Is it aromatic, anti-aromatic or non-aromatic? Non-aromatic. Yes, thank you. It's non-aromatic. And the reason for it to be non-aromatic is that it's cyclic, right? It's cyclic. 
but the second condition must be conjugated, is not conjugated because you have two single bond here. The pi bonds are separated by two single bonds. Or you have like another way of saying you have a sp3 hybrid carbon here. So this is not conjugated, is not conjugated. And since it's not conjugated is non-aromatic. Anti-aromatic is conjugated and it is cyclic. Like this is anti-aromatic. Okay. Sorry, anti-aromatic. Okay, can you tell me if this molecule is aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic? Aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic, the, the molecule that I circle. Is anti-aromatic, thank you. Every, anybody else in class, do you, is, just let me know if it's hard for you to recognize this is anti-aromatic. Because it's going to be important for the next exam. It makes sense? Okay, perfect. So it, it's um, it's a cyclic system is conjugated um, and is uh, is going to um, the four n uh, plus two equals eight and n is going to be one point five in this case so it is anti aromatic so this is anti um, aromatic what is going to happen if it gains like two electron you you make it react with potassium it can actually potassium is a metal potassium loses electron and this molecule is desired to gain electron two electrons because if it gains two electrons now instead of the 4n plus 2 being 8 now we have 10 and if the 4n plus 2 equals 10 then n equals 2 and is going to make aromatic structure so this molecule is aromatic after gaining two electrons. So it can act as a, uh, when it's gaining electron, it would be acting as a base. So it's gaining electron, a pair of electron. So it is aromatic. So aromatic compound, unfortunately the answer is here is not, but as long as you know why this is non-aromatic, what makes this non-aromatic? I'm talking about structure A is non-aromatic and what makes this to be non-aromatic? Number of electrons or conjugation is not conjugated. Thank you, Gabriel. Yes, is not conjugated. And because it's not conjugated is going to be non-aromatic, not conjugated. So it's not um, conjugated. Okay. And for this molecule, uh, what makes it to be aromatic? What are the conditions? First of all, is a cyclic system. Um, second, is conjugated. Okay, is conjugated because the, this uh, allylic carbic cation is going to move around, so it's delocalized. The pi bond can move here, plus charge can move and jump by two. Uh, carbon pi bond can move by one bond. So if you have the plus charge here now, the pi bond can move, the plus charge can move back by two carbon. So it's conjugated. Because it's conjugated and it's cyclic, the last option would be 4n plus 2 equals the number of electrons. And since number of electrons is 6, n equals 1, and it's going to be aromatic. Okay. So as long as you know why is, is aromatic. Okay, there is a, I noticed there is a typo here. Pay attention to that. There is a typo and this is supposed to be sp2. Change that please, okay? All carbons are sp2 hybrid because carbon cation is sp2 and any carbon that carries a double bond, one pi bond is um, sp2. So all carbons are sp2. There's a 
a typo. I corrected in the video, but yeah. can correct in the PowerPoint as well. Okay, uh, pyridine, it's aromatic. It is aromatic compound. Um, these are the molecules with the with the hetero um, hetero atoms, and uh, you're counting the number of of the uh, pi bonds. If you have, this is not a rule written in the books, but I tell the students they use it is going, to, it, it does help the students, okay? If you have an heteroatom that carries a double bond and pair of electrons, do not count the pair of electrons, okay? Just count the double bond. If you had a single bond on both sides and a pair of electrons, you count that pair of electrons, pair of the unshared electrons. Some books, they use a belt, like they use a trick. They put the electrons inside the ring. If it counts toward the aromatic system, they put the electrons outside of the ring. But if you look at the, the, the pi bonds attachment to the heteroatom, it's easier if you remember it. So if you see the heter heteroatom carries the double bond and the pair of electron, don't count the pair of electron, just count the pi bond. So you have two, four, and six. So pyridine is actually six pi electrons, and you're not counting this pair of unshared electron. You're not, you cannot count both of them. And uh, since you cannot count both of them, you only count like six. And if you have six electrons, a cyclic is conjugated, as a result is aromatic. The pair of electron that you have on pyridine, it can act as a base because for Lewis base, uh, element or atom is going to donate pair of electron. If this pair of electron was part of the aromatic system, if it was counted toward the, the, the aromatic system, it's not going to act as a base because it rathers to be part of the aromatic system and stabilize its own molecule than giving electron to something else to water. So in this case, the electrons are actually, nitrogen is acting as a base and it can donate electron. Any questions? Questions? Now, for this molecule, you see that the shortcut or the trick that I told you, if you pay attention, it does work. You have pair of electron on the nitrogen and you have no double bond on either side on the nitrogen. So you're counting this pair of electron. That's two, four, and then six. Cyclic conjugated and is going to be aromatic. Okay. Because it's aromatic, counting this pair of electrons, it cannot as act as a as a base, so it cannot get this, uh, you know, hydrogen. If it does, is going to is is not going to act as a strong base. Okay, it's not going to to um, get the donate these electrons easily because it's going from uh, from aromatic to non aromatic. And you don't want them go make the molecule to go from aromatic to non-aromatic or anti-aromatic because then it's going to be um, less stable. Okay. If you look at the PKB value, this is just another approach. Look at the PKB value for pyridine is a 8.8. .8. The lower the PKB, just like PKA, just like pH, the lower the number, that means is uh, more acidic or stronger. So lower PKB, meaning that is uh, more 
basic. So pyridine is more basic than pyrrole because pyrrole, the pair of electron, in order to act like a base, it must donate the pair of electron. This pair of electron needs to be consumed in the, or stay inside the ring to form that, to keep that pi system moving around. Um, if not, it would be broken link. So if it's given out or given up to act like a base is going to make the molecule very unstable from aromatic to non-aromatic. So the PKB is like 13.6. 13.6 is very close to 14. That's the weakest base that you can imagine. So doesn't want to give up on the um, electrons. Now, if you have a compound with two uh, nitrogen with each one with pair of electrons, that is going to make it more basic because we don't need this hydrogen uh, pair of electrons to count toward the aromatic property or aromatic system. You already have six electrons in the aromatic system. So uh, these electrons are just there for the molecule to act like a base. So it's going to get, make it a stronger base because we have two basic nitrogen. Uh, in this case, uh, we have one molecule that uh, one nitrogen that um, is uh, basic and the other nitrogen is not basic. So you have only one and this molecule is not, if, if the electrons are not counted toward the, um, toward the aromatic system, okay? Only one of the nitrogen is not basic. The other two are uh, basic. So if both of them are basic, then we don't have to worry about the basic property. You have two nitrogen that are not uh, contributing electrons toward the aromatic system. Okay. Ferran and uh, Typhon, both of them are aromatic. Uh, if you remember earlier, I said, if you have a heteroatom with two pairs of electrons, count one of them only. You have sulfur with two pairs of unshared electrons, count one of them. That's two, four, six, you have six electrons. Two, four, six, you have six electrons. Nitrogen, there is no um, double bond on either side. So this is going to be, um, also counted, though those pair of electrons count, and you have six electrons, you have six electrons. Um, the structures of the, um, the bicyclo or tricyclo, the only ones that you have to be concerned is naphthalene, that is aromatic, and then anthracene. So um, the, these are the only bicyclo or tricyclo. So don't worry about a lot more, okay? And so you have the anthracene, that you have like phenantherine, anthracene, and the, and the naphthalene, aromatic compounds. So examples of aromatic compounds. In terms of the structure, in terms of the definitions, like you see that they are all, all um, conjugated, they are cyclic, it's all conjugated. And if it is, um, if, you, when you, if you have one ring that it is uh, aromatic, then the molecule co is considered to be aromatic. Other allotropes of the of the carbon, we have diamond and we have graphite. That these are um, is like a planar molecule, layered structure, and then you have your graphite, which is the uh, a coordination, and it's not aromatic compound. Okay. So one of the competencies for this is, is uh, for this chapter is to be able to recognize um, if the molecule, the given molecule is aromatic or not. You will get like 
few questions based on this. And then is it aromatic or is it not aromatic? Uh, other types of questions that you get is the, the, the given molecule, is it acidic or is it basic? Um, or which one is the strongest, you know, uh, which one is the most acidic, which one is the least acidic uh, type of questions like that. If you remove a hydrogen from compound and that makes the, the, the whatever the product, a aromatic compound, then is acidic. But if you remove a hydrogen and it destroys the aromatic property, it goes from more stable to less stable, then it's not, it's not aromatic. Now, um, for the structures or more about the, the aromatic compounds, we want to know how to name these compounds. Benzene, is, it was the parent name for all aromatic compounds, and it's not the case anymore. So we do have the benzene ring. Maybe, you know, we can say it as a grandparent, but still... Uh, benzene ring is not the only uh, basic aromatic compound. So you have to memorize this. Uh, it's not for your exam two, it's for exam three, but you have to memorize these names here. If there is an OH bond, uh, OH group on the, attached to benzene ring, that means you have removed the hydrogen and you place the OH. So benzene ring is... Okay, benzene ring itself has six carbon and six hydrogen. So each carbon has one hydrogen. C6H6, six carbon and six hydrogen. You draw it like the best Lewis structure is going to give you three pi bonds to satisfy all carbon with four bonds and octa satisfy. If there is an OH, that means you must have removed one hydrogen. So basically, this compound has. Uh, six carbon and five hydrogen and one OH. Okay, so that's phenol. If you have, if you remove a hydrogen and you replace with CH3, is called toluene. Um, if you remove a hydrogen, replace it with NH2 is aniline, and then you have the anisole with OCH3. Uh, benzaldehyde. This is popular. You know it already. Uh, so we have benzaldehyde, benzoic acid, you've seen it before. Um, acetophenone is like an acetone that is replaced one methyl group with a phenyl group. And if you have, if you have a um, benzene ring that has lost the hydrogen, is attached to something else, it's called phenyl phenyl group. Okay. So phenyl group is a benzene ring that has, is attached. Um, so you have phenol, you have phenyl, and then one more, you have benzyl. Benzyl, it looks like a benzene ring attached to CH2. That is a benzyl, okay? Benzyl. So we have benzyl, we have phenol, and we have phenyl. These are three different, very similar in the structure. Phenyl is a benzyl ring attached to something else. You usually is like high priority group. Uh, phenol is just a benzyl ring attached to OH, and benzyl is the, the benzene ring um, carrying CH2 and is attached to another high priority functional group. So for monosubstituted benzene, you must memorize these names and they are all in the same slide and that's what you memorize. And for disubstituted, if you have a disubstituted benzene ring, now the substitutions, they can be with respect to each other for carbon one and two. If it's one and two, you would also give the abbreviation of ortho. Ortho is a prefix of ortho can be used instead of saying like uh, one and two. For example, 
if you have a phenol, okay, if you have a phenol and you have a methyl group here, um, you can say ortho methyl phenol. So if you say ortho methyl phenol, we already know that the structure of this compound, the major part of this molecule is phenol, which covers benzene ring with DOH. There is a branch here that is a methyl group attached to it. So that's a methyl group, CH3. The O is telling me that if OH is on carbon one, methyl group is going to be on carbon two because ortho is used for one, two disubstituted benzene ring. So if it's a one, three position, is going to call, be called either 1,3 or meta. Meta is used more often than the 1,3. And if it's para, it means that is 1,4. So you have para position, 1,4 or para position. So we have ortho-dichlorobenzene, ortho-dichloro. That means that you have two chloro group attached to benzene. And with respect to each other, if one is on carbon one, the other one is on carbon number two. So it's the ortho one, uh, ortho dichloro. Uh, now, if you have this molecule here, um, you have to first, uh, you have to first uh, find the, the parent name. So these are the parent names, okay? What part of the molecule, it gives you the parent name is the, the, the blue mark. This part of the molecule gives you the parent name. And if you look at the structure, is a COOH attached to the benzene ring, and that is benzoic acid. So blue box counts as the benzoic acid or responsible for the name of benzoic acid. And then there is a chloro group and chloro with respect to this carbon, because this is the high priority functional group, any carbon that this high priority functional group is attached is going to be numbered one. So one, two, three, you have chloro on position three. Instead of saying three chloro, you could say meta chloro benzoic acid. So you either say one, three, or you would say meta. Now for, the, for this molecule, one, four. Now, should I take the blue box as part of the major, uh, major part of the molecule and name that as the major part or the red box, which one should I take as the major part? Well, you didn't know this before. This is the first time you're looking at this structure. Um, so your clue is to go back to this slide and see which one of these is part of these parent names. Is it the blue or the, or the red box? Which one you can see in that list? And what is the name? So what's the major part of this molecule? The name for the major part. It's the uh, phenol, okay? It's phenol, very good. It's phenol and that is the red box, right? So the red box counts as the major part of the molecule. And then you would take whatever is not part of the box, is not part of the phenol, you would take as a branch. So we have a nitro group here. The nitro group is attached to carbon number four with respect to this OH. So one, two, three, and four. So uh, it's four nitro phenol or para nitro phenol. So you have to memorize these, know it by heart, what, what is the name for phenol, for toluene, for aniline, and anisole. And then if you have additional groups attached to it, you would name it as branch. So uh, based on the priority, uh, the benzoic acid takes highest priority. So if you have like a OH group here, you don't count this part as the major functional group because this is the carboxylic acid takes priority. So OH would count as, as a branch. So you would just say uh, one, two, three, and four. 
for hydroxy, for hydroxy or para hydroxy benzoic acid. So you would have to name it based on uh, high priority as well. Okay, questions? Any questions for me about naming? Um, I have a question, but it's not quite about naming. I just has to go back about that, the table that we have to memorize. Yes. I was wondering if you had like any tips or tricks like that probably helped you memorize it or did you just um, like get better at it after like doing practice problems and stuff? Uh, there are few of them that they, it has been used in the past, like phenol, benzoic acid, benzaldehyde, and the acetophenone. But aniline and toluene and anisole, those are new. Unfortunately, there is really nothing that I can, I can help you with. But at least we know that benzoic acid is being used too often, benzaldehyde, and the acetophenone. Acetophenone is like a acetone, but you have replaced the CH3 with what phenyl group? So I wish I had a better answer for you, but no, there is really no uh, um, shortcut, no memory trick here. And uh, the, good, the only good thing is that is only those um, parent names. You're not responsible for any other pa parent name as far as it comes to for memorization. But you need to know now the positions, if it's a one, two is also known as ortho or one, three is called meta and one, four is called para. Okay, for this molecule, so, so we're just going to practice more. Hopefully that helps you to remember some of it. Um, so for this molecule, uh, we didn't have NO2 part of the major um, or parent aromatic compound. OH with the benzene ring, it gives a parent, and that is called phenol. And if you, if OH gives the name of phenol to this, this must be numbered as one, and you would start numbering to the side that it gets close, it assigns smaller number to the other branches. So it would be one, two, uh, three, four, five, and six. So you have a nitro group on carbon number two and nitro group on carbon number four. That's why is the name of this compound is going to be 2,4-dinitrophenol. 2,4-dinitrophenol. Okay. In this case, carboxylic acid takes the, takes the priority. So we have benzoic acid, and this is carbon one, benzoic acid. Either way you number it is going to be three and five or three and five, vice versa. So it's going to be three, five uh, hydroxy or dihydroxy because you have two of the hydroxy group, dihydroxy benzoic acid. So. Okay, since I, um, I promised that those are the only names, I'm not going to bring these on the exam, okay? I don't say anything about the quiz, but on the exam, I will not bring this name so you don't have to know about the, uh, the actual name for these. You can name it as, okay? You can name it as uh, paramethylphenol or ortho benzoic acid. Instead of the ortho toluic acid, you can say ortho benzoic acid. So um, you can use the IUPAC name for it. So you don't have to know the common name for these. Since I said it, that is the only, that slide is the only parent name for it. And then I already talked about this. Uh, 
Phenyl, this is a common name, um, bromide, or you could say bromobenzene. Okay. And benzyl, it's the benzyl ring carrying CH2. That is benzyl, okay. benzyl bromide. So as long as you know this group is benzyl, okay, that is a benzyl. It can be attached to bromide, chloride, whatever, but is benzyl group attached to. Uh, physical property of aromatic compounds, they are very similar to alkane. They, have, they are not soluble in water. They are nonpolar compounds. Uh, they are, of course, larger, like they have at least, you know, the, the number of, okay, let's put it this way. Um, aromatic compounds, they must be planar. So if they are planar, they are going to stack better. So they have better stackability. Um, option and the melting point as a result is going to be higher compared to what? Compared to like six carbon alkane, uh, six carbon alkene. So you have benzene ring is going to have higher melting point because benzene ring is flat and you can put one benzene ring on top of another benzene ring and on top of another benzene ring because they are all flat surface and the contact area is going to be greater. So basically van der Waals forces is going to be stronger because you have more of a contact area. So if you have, if you have groups attached to benzene ring that they are electron withdrawing, it depends if both electron withdrawing group are on the or same side, like in ortho versus one is ortho one para. Let me draw example and I tell you what this means. Uh, let's say you have a benzene ring that you have chlorine and a chlorine versus you have a benzene ring that you have chlorine attached to this carbon and chlorine attached there. If I call this compound A and compound B, which one is, it has higher boiling point, uh, which one is going to be uh, basically a stronger dipole moment? Which one has stronger dipole moment? Can you answer that? A or B? Which one is more polar? Can you hear me? Yes, B. Okay, perfect. B is more polar because A, uh, chlorine pulls electrons up, the other chlorine pulls electrons down, and these two is going to uh, cancel each other's effect. But in this case, chlorine is pulling electron this way, and this chlorine is pulling electrons this way, and they're going to add each other. And then the, this side of the molecule is going to be negative. Opposite side is going to be positive. So it's going to be po more polar. As a result, if you have an ortho, dichloro is going to be more polar than paradichloro. And B has higher boiling point compared to um, compared to A. For the mass spectroscopy, you see, uh, we, we talked about mass spectroscopy based on the most stable carbocation. And if you have like benzylic carbocation, it's very stable because phenyl group is a strong electron donor. It's going to help you here and any, anywhere that you are going to practice uh, strength or, or stability of carbocation. Benzylic carbocation is very stable. And that's why you're getting that as a base peak. So um, your, the questions from the mass spec or IR or NMR they are like limited to a specific and very, very obvious 
uh, cuts. So uh, for the for this 91, the, the reason you have 91 as the base peak is the stability of the benzylic uh, carbocation. For the uh, uh, for UV spectroscopy, you do have many um, pi bonds. So as a result, the lambda max is going to be higher, uh, and if it's conjugated with another pi bond, is going to be even um, increasing even more. So it depends on if it's if it's going to be conjugated with another pi bond. The higher the conjugation the higher the value for the lambda max. Okay, very good. And I'm going to uh, stop the recording here.